strengthening its foothold in the Eastern Cape province. It's one of the fastest growing business opportunities, but extended periods of drought, the limitations of hunting permits and criminal activities like poaching are just some of the challenges the booming industry is facing. The devastating drought that crippled many commercial farmers. Dry pans and lack of rain, taking their toll on farmers who rely on livestock and game for a living. Animals were also not spared. Despite the challenges, the wildlife industry in the Eastern Cape is currently experiencing sustained growth and development. These came under discussion at the Wildlife Ranching Conference at Jeffreys Bay. This year at this stage, we, where I am, uh, we've only had 70% of our, our average to date. But along the coast, they've had better rains. There's uh, an improvement over the last six weeks. But the interior, the Grafnet, Aberdeen, Craddock, those areas are heavily affected. Black emerging farmers were also encouraged to enter the market. Getting black farmers involved is important in terms of uh, stimulating demand for wildlife products and services. But what's even more important is to stimulate demand by ordinary black South Africans. Farmers are now teaming up with scientists to genetically preserve DNA samples from various wildlife. This to ensure the continuation of the bloodline of animals. So when we speak about genetics, we're talking bloodline. So we are able to trace an animal back and we've got records of these animals. And, and part of that is also a developing a mapping distribution map for the various areas. In provinces like Limpopo, the Free State and Northwest, wildlife has brought in large sums of money for some time. The Eastern Cape, while known as a good hunting destination, has only started formalizing game as a thriving industry over the past decade. Jade Lee Paulser, SABC News, Jeffreys Bay, 